Mike Davis overheard one Blue Devil play, player asking, when do we play on Saturday? He reported that back to his team. Jared Jeffries, Bloomington, Indiana native, may have been the key to this game and one of the key moments in the tenure of Mike Davis when Davis was an assistant. Jeffries just couldn't bear to tell him no. So he signed with the Hoosiers saying no to Duke after being very impressed with a visit down there. Duke would blow out to a big early lead. Chris Duhon knocking down the three. The Duke is up by 17 in the first half. Led by 12 at the break. The second half, the Hoosiers claw back. Jeffrey rejected by Jones, but Indiana gets the rebound, and A.J. Moye gets him back within six. Now, final seven minutes. Jeffrey Newton to Moye, who played well. Moye was really a star in this game. Ten big points coming off that run that Indiana needed to get this game going. You can see the foul trouble there on the missed free throw. Jeffrey's there for the follow. His quickness getting to a lot of rebounds off missed free throws. And Boozer goes up, blocked by Moye. He's giving away a lot of size. The jump ball goes to Indiana. AJ played sensational in the second half. A lot of emotion. Had 14 big points for the game. Who's your fan? Smell the upset. But Jason Williams, the big drive, takes it right to Jeffries. Duke leads by four. Now it's a three-point game. Final three. Dunleavy misses, but Boozer. Back out to Dunleavy. Onions, as Billy Rafter would say. Big three. Well, that was a big, big three. But these kids wouldn't quit. Take a look at this pass by Coverdale. Inside, Jared Jeffries, a super sell. Now tied at 70. Minute 20 to go. Duhon looking for Carlos Boozer, but he throws the ball out of bounds. 15 Duke turnovers. Hoosiers now can take the lead as Krzyzewski looks stunned. Coverdale. Turn around, tough shot, gets the roll. His first field goal of the game, Indiana's first lead of the game. Almost a turnover. Moye, though, eventually gets fouled by Chris Duhon. Duke fans wanted traveling there. Moye goes to the line. Coach Davis can barely look. First one good, three-point lead. Second one, also money, four-point. Indiana lead 11 seconds to go. Only thing you can't do is foul a three-point shooter. William oh, gets wow, it back. Wow. Are you kidding me? Wow. Look at Mike Davis to his knees. Smelling heartbreak hotel. So Williams to the free throw line. Down one. 4.2 to play. He's had trouble at the line all year. Shot is up. Missed it. Oh, no. Boozer. He missed it, but no. No, get it, rebound. And it was. They've done it. You can see the replay. Boozer kind of shoving Jeffries out of the way. He thought he got fouled on the way up. The tip doesn't go. Mike Davis pointing to C.M. Newton, the former Kentucky AD, who was there courtside in Lexington. And Indiana rallies from 17 town despite not hitting a three-pointer in the second half. They do it with 20 offensive boards and 21 second chance points. Mike Davis, the highest point on his young coaching career. That's a great basketball team. And I mean, Coach Self said it the best. He said, all you have to do is be better that day. And we're not better than that team. There's no way we're better than that basketball team. But tonight, down the stretch, um, our guys kept fighting. This group you know, won 132 games in four years and lost 15. You know, like, but each time we go on the court, we think that there's a chance that that team we're playing against can beat us. And uh, that's called respect for the opponent and respect for the game. And, uh, and tonight we, we lost. Well, you can see that free throws missed in losses have been critical. Duke lost to a couple of non-NCAA tournament teams, Florida State and Virginia. And as great as Jason Williams has been, he has had problems at the line in clutch situations in a couple of those losses. It was a Florida State game. He missed a couple free throws. Realizing their final four chances have just been greatly enhanced with the heavyweight Duke getting knocked out. Kent State, of course, the 10 seed from the one-bid Mid-American Conference, but forget that. This game basically a toss-up, matching two very good point guards, two team leaders, two guys who actually lead their team in scoring, Huffman and Knight, both giving their team a lot more than just the 16 points per game, and both battling foul trouble in this ballgame. Which team could survive better with their leader, Hanford? Stan Heath, his former boss, Tom Izzo, they had to root him on in Lexington. Late in the first half, Trevor Huffman frees himself, knocks down the triple. Kent State led by six at the break. Panthers rally. 
Jerron Brown in traffic. He was tough. Physical presence for Pittsburgh down low that Kent State had trouble dealing with. But Huffman finds Eric Thomas. Shows the dish after drawing the attention. Kent State back up by four. Well, Thomas big coming off the bench. 12 big points. Brandon Knight tries to rally his team. Tough off balance. Runner goes and ties the game at 66. Final 30 seconds. Antonio Gates. Goes in. Three points. Well, they call. They you got to count it. it. They wave it off. Where? How can they wave that off? Because they say his foot hits the ground. Oh, no, 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 no. Chris, uh, come on. Bad call. Bad, bad call. I was explaining what happened. You want bad to call. Going overtime. In the final seconds. The desperation does not go. And we go to the extra session in overtime. A nice spin by Knight. Ties the game again. Huffman answers. The other end, both these guys playing with four fouls as they had been throughout much of regulation. Huffman gets the runner to go. Kent State up by two. It was a three-point game. Zabatskis for the tie in the iron and kind in Lexington. And Kent State. Call them Cinderella's. Don't call them Cinderella's, but call them a good team and call them an elite eight team as Stan Heath knocks out the champions of the Big East West, 78-73. Huffman gets the W in the point guard duel with Knight. I was about to beat up Shaw when, uh, you know, he let his man cut down and I got my fourth foul and I was just, you know, I was just praying. I was just, <laughs> please don't let me follow up my, you know, my senior year, my senior game, you know, my, maybe one of my last games. And, um, you know, he just, he just kept me in there and, um, you know, coach trusted me and, you know, I just, I just feel so blessed and so grateful right now for, um, you know, this opportunity and the opportunity I had to, you know, take a big shot in the, the last seconds of the game. Imagine the strain on Oklahoma coach Calvin Sampson, a good friend of Olson's. His father, Ned, hospitalized after emergency brain surgery on Tuesday. He had to have some blood drained. Not just his father, but also his high school coach, his inspiration. Some tears and not much sleep in the hours since for Calvin Sampson as he got his team ready to play a very good Arizona team. Sampson and Hollis Price, his point guard talking strategy, and Price knocks down the triple. Other than Hollis Price's perimeter shots in the first half, Sinners didn't really have much offense. Well, Luke Walton did on the defensive end when they start the game, going to points zone, one, two, two zone, slide him down, the double team inside, and Aaron McGee. McGee only goes one for three in the first half, two points, so the defensive strategy was right there, as you see it again, in the first half. Good job by Arizona, and of course, Walton, when he plays, anything can happen. Transition, assist, one of his eight assists in the game, solid performance early. Like I said, Price really keeping him in the game. You don't expect him to knock down six triples and a half, but here it is, number six. 22 of the team's 33 first half points. He kept the Sooners within four at the break. It began to turn up the defense in the second half. Ebi Yara then nails the triple, and the Sooners take the lead now, first minute and a half of the second half. Arizona, little mini spurt. They go back in front. And Darian Selby, nice spin move. He banks it home. 15 for Selby as he chipped in nicely. Still a close game. Price dribbles the ball off his heel. Jason Gardner gets it. Price body checks him. Gardner makes the layup and the foul. 14 points for Gardner. Oklahoma now had to go to the transition game, Dick. Well, you know, Price got into foul trouble. He had a sit, and the others picked it up. It was Ebi Hurrah, baby. The Juco sensational. He nailed the three. Hurrah for hurrah. And then Aaron McGee on the interior was sensational, but steps out and knocks a trifecta. Had 21 points in the second half. I mean, he and Hurrah were big, baby. And as soon as March on. Showed you a lot of threes from the Sooners. The Cats just 5 of 22 behind the line. Oklahoma outscoring Arizona 55 to 30 in the second half. And afterward, Kelvin Sampson, a sigh of relief. The teams that do well in the NCAA tournament are teams that are good enough, not the ones that handle the pressure. We're, we're good enough to beat people. In the past, uh, we were good enough to get there. Now we're good enough to win. Pressure has nothing to do with it. I'm not coaching any different this week than I did last week or two years ago or three years ago. Coach Olson didn't either. He's, he's won a national championship. I thought he coached pretty good today. He just got beat by a better team. There you have it. <laughs> UCLA have advanced this far despite some spotty play from its stars. And Missouri, well, the, perhaps they're the most dangerous team because they have no conscience. They, in fact, they're unconscious, said Brian Brown of One Victim Ohio State. They just shoot whenever they want. And 
certainly Quinn Center hoping his team would not wake up. A rematch, of course, of the Tyus Edney miracle that beat the Tigers a few years ago. You see Clarence Gilbert appearing to dislocate his finger. He would come back in a game. That would be key. Jason Capona, the nice touch pass to Matt Barnes, who lays it in. Bruins stars in the first half, though, largely quiet. Ricky Paulding was not quiet. The triple from the corner. And then Paulding again ties the game at 26. Under a minute to play and a half. Paulding carrying the Tigers offensively. Hits the short jumper. Missouri up two at the break. They go on that 12-2 to run in. They have to go up 30 to 28. See, Gedzurek makes the block and then runs the floor. Gets rewarded with the alley-oop. He ties the game at 30 in the second half. You can see atypically low scoring for these teams. Nice pass. Barnes looks back, finds Billy Knight. Bruins off eight, appearing to take control. Mizzou wouldn't die. Gilbert knocking down the triple. Tigers had a one-point lead. Moments later, Kareem Rush. We haven't called his name in the highlights yet, but he knocks down the triple right there. Missouri up 63-59. Then Arthur Johnson, again, blocked by Big Gad Zurich, but shows persistence oh, yeah. for Hoop and the Harm. Oh, he Solid inside, 5.63. He, he just really gets it done when he needs it. He had a double-double, 14 and 13. He was a dominator in the three-second area. He hit the wide body. Gad Zurich's taller, but he yeah. body checks him backward, then hits the shot over, and then Gilbert knocks down the wide-open triple. 23 for Gilbert, 17 after halftime. And Quinn Snyder on a night when Mike Krzyzewski is knocked out. Quinn Snyder marches on to the Elite Eight. 82-73. By the way, we should mention both combatants in last year's championship game knocked out already. And Missouri continues to become one of the low seeds to make it to the final eight. We've got a pair of them here now with Kent State and Missouri Temple.